This is a very small threaded core. Uh, it's actually for a brake component for a, a master cylinder reservoir, and it's the it forms the thread on the reservoir that the uh, the plastic bit that actually holds the fluid screws into. It's a bit of an awkward little mold to use, to be honest. The um, dowel pins are a little long. Just pour in the shell sand, stir it around with an old screwdriver because this helps push the uh, sand into the threads in the core. Even it out on the top a little. Put some heat on it to partially cure it. Maybe for about 30 seconds or so. What I want here is just to get it about half cured off so that I can then cut a hole in the middle of it like this. Because this hole is going to make it a lot easier to get the core out of the casting afterwards. Now we put it on and wait the balance of uh, the usual two and a half minutes core cure time. A minute and a half to go. That's got to be getting pretty close. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Good smart wax seems to help everything come free. Doesn't come out too bad, actually. I'm not too unhappy with that. And it, I guess it just sort of shows the, the sort of thing you can do with shell cores. It's a very, very useful core making process. This is our little... Uh, brake master cylinder fluid reservoir uh, casting and this bolts onto the firewall of a car. Uh, the, there's a plastic reservoir that screws down into this and we'll form a thread in there with a shell core that you saw me make a little while ago. Um, and the brake fluid uh, pipe comes from here I assume down to the master cylinder. So we've made up a little pattern here that includes the uh, the runner, the gate and the base for a, a feeder uh, and the base for the sprue. This makes it uh, quite a lot easier to work with of course. Okie dokie. Bit of facing sand. A little more there, we've not quite got it covered. There we go. Backing sand. quickly rub it back so that we get the parting iron exposed properly all around. There we go. Another box. <laughs> Feeder. Sprue.
that. Just take that off the pattern. Got it. Nice. Facing set. That's all we need. Back up sand. That'll be enough of that too for this job, I think. These little boxes ram up so quickly. They're very nice. I like them. Now, the easiest way to get this pattern out is to loosen it in the bottom box first. Now I could just try and lift that straight out, but I think what I'll do, I'll loosen it like this. Hopefully I'll loosen it. easier yeah and we'll put the box back together spin the box over and drop the pattern out onto the <laughs> what is now the bottom box just make certain it's where it should be Hopefully we'll get a good lift. There we go, not too bad at all. Quite a nice little lift that. And now we can just lift this Straight off. Well, we'll give it a bit of a tap first. And lift it out. If it come out. There we go.
Now this job is has one little tricky aspect. We can't put the little threaded core into the box because into the drag box because it would have to sit on that uh, and this would then have to align with the hole there so the only way we can actually do this baseboard clean baseboard sit the cope on it put the core in the cope like this and we will do a trial close first to shake any loose sand off all right that's it we've got that looks all right now we put the drag back on top of the cope and then we spin the whole lot over and the core should now be in the right place I will extend the uh, sprue and riser on this box, not because I need the, the extra feed metal, but because I want a fair bit of pressure in this mould to make certain that the, uh, the, the threads fill properly and the, and the area at the top of the threads, it's quite thin. Actually, I think we'll probably just use one of these up that way too. Uh, we won't on that box because it's damaged. That'll do it. That'll hold it. And that's one. Just a little follow-up on the casting of these brake uh, fluid reservoir bases. There's a bit of a problem with them, and that is getting this core out afterwards. Whilst I have often in my videos extolled the virtues of, of shell cores, and I've often said that the breakdown of them is very good, they do have the Achilles heel that if the core is thick and the casting thin, there's not really enough heat to cook the core off and breakdown then becomes very poor and it is in fact quite difficult to get these cores out of the casting. But the question is, how do we get the core out? Well, I started last night and after 10 minutes at one of them with a screwdriver and a cold chisel, I thought, no, that's a nonsense. So what I now do, first of all, I drill through there where you can see the core protruding. I drill through there with a masonry drill and then we go for this rather noisy device. We have to make certain we don't jab ourselves in the hand here. Right. And then we go. And there we go. So there we have it. A simple little pattern made up actually out of an original part simply with a, a runner, a gate, a place for the riser to go, and a place for the sprue to go, and a little board just to uh, help us set it up properly. A core box, uh, this one's actually rather far from simple. It's machined out of one, two, three, four pieces and bolt it together. I'm certainly glad I didn't have to make it. Um, but it does make quite a nice little shell core. Oops, a daisy around that way. Get it in the right orientation. And that gives us the little thread in our casting. Here are, are a few of the castings I did. And the thread that comes out, well, it's not as nicely finished as the um, the outside of the casting but then the sand that the core is made out of is unfortunately not as fine but they'll work quite well I think 
This is the uh, plastic little plastic reservoir that screws in. As you can see, it's just got an O-ring seal, um, and a fitting has been fitted to the bottom of the uh, the little casting. And this is an as-cast thread, and it just nicely goes straight in. And that sits up on the firewall of the car. Pipe leads from here down to the master cylinder, and that's the full deal.